Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately and the power of his resurrection. And in doing so, well, you need, if we're going to get to know God, we have to examine the entire word. That's how I was taught and by my mentor. And so we've been examining things in the Old Testament, the New Testament, or the Old Blood Covenant, New Blood Covenant. And now we're talking about supernatural beings. And of course, we're talking about spiritual beings in the spiritual realm. God's a spirit, man's a spirit, the angels are spirits, the devil's a spirit, all of demons and evil spirits and all of that. And all of the different kinds of angels in heaven, we're talking about the spirits. Now, so far, we've talked about God, we've talked about man as spirits, and we are now talking about that man needed a redeemer. That's where we left off in the last uh, session. Man came into this world with the nature of sin and separated from God, and, then, and God then come into this world literally as a human being in every respect, as we discussed in the last session. And he really took a chance in doing that because if he would have yielded to any of the temptations the devil would have brought to him, then of course there would, he would cease to be holy, he'd become unholy, he would, heaven would fall apart, everything would fall apart, and the devil would have had the victory. But thank God he made it all the way to the cross sinless. Now, incarnation, simply incarnation is an embodiment of God in the form of a man. That's what the incarnation is. And it was announced way back in Genesis 3.15, just as soon, right after Adam rebelled and man was separated from God, immediately God launched his plan of redemption that he would, would take on the form of a human being, which is called the incarnation. And he would take on the, it was, it's the embodiment of God in a man. And this would be, the man Jesus, the union of deity and man, the unity of God and man in one. All right. So then, we we uh, we we can look at the scriptures, and we should. And I'll just come back here to. We'll start off with Hebrews two and seventeen, and uh, we're getting there. Hebrews two and seventeen, and of course it reads this way. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren. In other words, he had to be made like a man, that he might be merciful and faithful, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Now, propitiation simply means that he, that he suffers the penalty for all of mankind's sins. And so then, he took our place. Then we go to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. Let's just back up a few verses. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, God, Jesus, likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So Jesus here tells us that he literally took on the form of flesh and blood, just like all the rest of us. And then we come on over to the, uh, well, the Amplified Bible, I guess is what I should be reading out of. I've made a note to make sure that we do that. So I'll come back here to Genesis chapter 2 and in verse 14 in the Amplified Bible. And since, therefore, these, his children, share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings... He himself, in a similar manner, partook of the same nature, that's our nature, the nature of sin, that by going through death, and see, at the cross is where he took on our nature. All of our sins were laid upon him when he was on the cross. Now, he was sinless all the way to the cross. He had to remain sinless in order to be our sinless substitute. And then on the cross, it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we'd come to that place where sin, death, and Satan would have no power over our lives as well. And that's when he took on our nature as a human spirit. He became dead spiritually on the cross. 
he took on our nature. And so then, and, and uh, that by going through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who at the power of death, that is the devil. And so then, that's Hebrews 2, 14, and in, in the Amplified Bible. Now, I want to come back here to Philippians and chapter uh, 2, and we'll pick it up here in verse 5 in the Amplified Bible. Therefore, the same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. In verse 6, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Verse 7, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant or a slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. And after, in verse 8, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself so, still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. And so we hear then, it just in real detail, in the Amplified Bible, we see that God literally took on the form of a being. He left all of his glory and privileges as God in heaven. And so then, God, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, the Word became flesh. Jesus is called the Word of God. He's called the Son of God, God the Son. But now God the Son, the Word of God, takes on the form of a human being, literally in every respect. He takes our place. And so, praise God. He's always existed. So he was not created or formed. He just took on the form of a human spirit. Now, Eve, of course, created or provided the physical body for Jesus. But Jesus took on the form of a human spirit. And, and dwelt within her womb as the body was being prepared. <laughs> All right, so then Jesus literally comes into this world through the womb of a woman, just like you and I do. So in every respect, he had to come into this world as a sinless human being, clothed with the same sinful flesh that we have in order to take our place. Hallelujah. Well, glory to be to God. What kind of God is this? He's got it made, but he loves us so much that he's willing to take our place. And if he'd have missed it, he'd have gone to hell for us and that'd have been the end of everything. But he was willing to, again, in my words, take that chance. Now I come back here to, well, 1 John 4 and in verse 10. In this is love. I'm talking about well, uh, well, verse 8 of 1 John 4, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love. Now get this point. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So here, the point is, God loved us first. He first loved us and took our place. Then we loved him. Wow. I'm telling you, God is something else, isn't he? His love for us. And why would we not want to love and obey him for what he has done? Well, We'll continue on in the next session. Meanwhile, you just be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do. Amen.